So happy to have you here. My name is Bethany with Singer Sewing Company. I'm an educator here and we are going to get started in just a minute. I hopped on a few seconds early so that people would get notified that we were getting started and then we'll jump into it. But today I'll briefly let you know um, we are going to be going over our project of the month and then I'll also give you a sneak peek at the end of next month's project of the month for August. Um, I cannot believe we're halfway through the year already. It's crazy. I feel like it's flown by. Um, if you are tuning in, please let us know where you're watching from. I'd love to say hi to you. Um, let us know if you've made our project of the month, um, which is our little strawberry bag here, which we will be going over some tips on um, how to successfully complete that project today. We're going to be talking about how you can take just a most commonly used stitch and make it into something decorative by adjusting the settings on the stitch. So we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you that today um, and everything you need to successfully complete the project of the month, which I am so obsessed. This is probably one of my favorite projects that I've made for Singer so far and I've made quite a few, <laughs> um, but this is, this is really cute. Someone said they're looking to make it this weekend. This is a great little weekend project. So definitely stay tuned and watch this, Kathy, because I'm going to go over some things that are really going to make making this a lot easier. Um, so if you don't have those things, you might want to pick them up so you're prepared to make it this weekend. Um, so this is the project of the month. And for those tuning in, if you can say hi and let us know where you're watching from, we'd love to know that. I I'm Bethany. I'm an educator for Singer Sewing Company. If you this is your first time to one of our monthly lives, welcome. We're excited to have you. If you are have been here before and you've seen my face before, I'm so excited to have you back. Um, definitely chat with us in the comments. We want to um, engage. This is an opportunity to ask me questions and I will do my best to answer them. If I don't know, I do have a team of wonderful people behind the camera um, assisting in the chat as well. I do want to start out by saying if there are any links added to the chat that do not come from Singer Sewing Company, do not click on them. They may be spam. So just to be safe, don't click on any links that are not from us. OK, um, like I said, my name is Bethany. I am here in my studio here just outside of Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, we're going to get started with our project of the month. We're not making it today. We're just doing tips and tricks which is what I like to do is, is show you guys some, some tips on how to make these. Um, if you didn't see it already in the description, um, there will be links to things that we're going to show you today, uh, including a link to the written instructions for the project of the month. These are free projects. So if you didn't know, we have pro brand new projects every month that are free and available on singer.com. So definitely go to singer.com under inspiration, click on sewing projects and you'll find them all there. But I know that my team has already linked this one directly for you. And it comes with um, great photos of all the different steps. Uh, and then the pattern for the strawberry is included and you can resize this to make it and print it any size that you want to make your bag. Okay. So you're going to need some instructions. And then um, you're going to need some vinyl. So I'm actually using three different types of vinyl on this project. You do not have to do that. You can do what you have on hand. You can do what you can find at your local fabric stores. I did have to order a couple of things online because I couldn't find them locally, but that doesn't mean you can't. Okay. So one of the things that you're going to need, and I'm going to switch to this camera real quick, is a quilted vinyl. This is optional. You don't have to use a quilted one, but I love the little diamond shape. I think it makes it look more like a strawberry and it adds some cushion and depth to it, which is fun. And then I also used a regular red vinyl. This one is um, pretty soft and um, malleable. So it made it a lot easier when this was, this was the back of the purse and this is the front to be able to turn it right side out. And then the last one that I used um, is this dark green. The reason I, this is a marine vinyl, so this is like really thick and um, stiffer. Uh, you do not have to use marine vinyl for this part. It's just what I could find in a green color in, in the store. Um, so I did have to get the thicker one, but I did find that it made my little leaves and stem really stand up nice and firm and I didn't have to add any stabilizer or anything. Uh, and it made the top of the bag really hold its shape and, and secure the zipper in. 
So it may actually, it may have worked in my favor to have ended up with that heavier marine vinyl um, because it really worked in my favor. I think it made it really cute. All right. So with that being said, we're using a lot of uh, vinyl materials for this project. And there are definitely some tools that you're going to need to be successful in sewing with these types of materials. So let me switch back over here. Um, so I'm going to tell you real quick today, I am sewing on the Singer 8060 sewing machine. Um, and we are going to use a couple of accessories today with this machine to show you how to make the seeds to get this decorative seed look on your bag. Um, I do go through it in the instructions, but I, it was one of those things that I kind of had to play with to figure out. So we're going to talk about some of those things that I learned when figuring out how to make them look like seeds that will probably help you achieve a similar look. Okay. So this is the 8060 sewing machine. I did pick it out today um, because it's a great machine. It's computerized. So it's going to make um, making these seeds so much easier, but you do not need a computerized machine to sew this up. You can actually do this with a mechanical machine. Um, but I, you know, this is red. I had to kind of go with the matching red thing today. And then um, we are going to stitch out a couple of the little uh, seeds for this. So I cut one for um, today's example. And I want to tell you before you start stitching out your seeds on this, there's two things you need to do. You need to get a scrap piece of the quilted um, vinyl and put some fabric behind it and do some practice runs, okay? Because your machine may stitch it a little different than the instructions that I included. So you may have to adjust it a little bit or if you want them to look a little different, you may have to adjust it, okay? But um, so that's step number one is you definitely wanna practice on some scrap pieces before you start stitching out on this. The second thing is, and this is in the instructions, you're going to want to put something, some fabric on the back side of this. Now, I chose to line the bag with this really cute little strawberry fabric. And you see, I didn't go over these edges here. Um, I just cut out the same shape and I attached it with some heat and bond, that double-sided adhesive that you press on to the back. You do not want to put your iron onto the front. This is like a faux uh, like a vinyl, kind of a plasticky material, but it's okay to do it on the back. Okay. Just be careful with that and your iron. And this was, this is now stuck to this, uh, the backside of this quilted vinyl. And so that's why you can kind of see the same shape on the back. It's just a piece of cotton fabric that I had. And the reason it's important to put this on the back first is because the backside of this quilted vinyl looks like this. And it's very thin layer of, um, you can see it right here, that covers the foam. And this right here, when you put it under your, uh, your foot, there's those uh, feed dogs or those teeth as we like to call them sometimes. And they're really rough and they catch on this and prevent the fabric from feeding through the machine as you're sewing. So your, your seeds won't look very good. So you definitely wanna make sure that you line it with some fabric first, okay? So that's my number one tip today, or two tips today so far, practice first, and then make sure you put the lining on first before you start stitching out your seeds, okay? All right, any questions so far? I think we're doing okay. Awesome. All right, so I am gonna show you the stitch that we're using, and it's a zigzag stitch. So we're gonna select the zigzag stitch. One of the things I love about this 8060 sewing machine and this computerized machine is the quick reference stitches. These are most commonly used stitches. So we've got two different needle position straight stitches. We've got our zigzag, we've got a one-step buttonhole. Um, so it's nice because if I need to switch stitches, it's this. these are some of the ones I use the most, okay? So right here, this first black box right here, it um, is our settings for this stitch. So I'm gonna click on the arrow, the button under the arrow underneath that. So here I can adjust my stitch, the stitch width and the stitch length, okay? Can you guys see that well? Do I need to get a little closer? I want you guys to be able to see this really well. Good, all right, let's see. Awesome, thank you for saying it looks amazing. I appreciate that. 
All right, so we're gonna adjust this stitch. Now in my instructions, and I did sew this project on this machine, so I'm gonna follow what's in my instructions. Again, if you're not sewing on the 86, you may need to adjust it for your machine. Um, but we are gonna change our stitch length down, all the way down to 0.4. I found that that worked well for me. Um, it allowed, it wasn't, it, this will go all the way down to zero. Obviously we don't want to stitch back and forth. We want it to feed through the machine. Um, so 0 0.4, 0 0.5, those are both good kind of starting points for the length of the stitch because we want our zigzag to be close together, okay? We want, um, we don't want it to move down the fabric a whole lot, okay? Now you'll see all of mine are a little bit different sizes and that's okay. No two seeds are the same, but as it's stitching, we want it to go a little bit at a time. And so that's where we change the stitch length, just like you would for a satin stitch. And then for the stitch width, um, we are going to, it's really gonna be based on the settings that are available on your machine. Um, the reason I like to do this on a computerized machine is it allows me to adjust the stitch width as we sew the seed by just hitting one button. And each time I go up, just like that, it's that easy. So we're gonna start with two millimeters and we're gonna go up to five and then we're gonna go back down to two and that's gonna create our seed. Now, in the instructions, I put how many stitches I did of each size so that you can kind of get an idea of, of how I achieved these to look like this. Um, if you're using a mechanical machine and you don't, you won't have any of this, you'll have the dial, you'll have the, um, the knob at the top to adjust, typically it's at the top to adjust the stitch width. And that's where you would have to do it. So you just kind of have to like, kind of make sure you know how much you've turned it every single time. That's again, why using a computerized machine for something like this allows you to be a little more precise. All right, so I'm gonna go over to this area of the machine where we're gonna sew. Right now I have our general purpose or all purpose foot that comes with this machine. This is a great foot, but for today's project, we are going to take this one off and we're gonna use a non-stick foot. If you have not used a non-stick foot or you do not have a non-stick foot, we do a lot of projects here at Singer that um, use a lot of different types of materials and a non-stick foot is a great foot to have in your, um, storage here for these kind of projects. So these, this nonstick foot is perfect for sewing with the vinyl we're working with today. It's also great for um, uh, faux leather and real leather as well. And one of the things, I'm gonna switch to this camera, it's a little better lighting so you guys can see it better. So this is the nonstick foot. Looks similar to the general purpose foot that we were just had on the machine. Um, it does have these nice curves here. So when you're working with a thicker material or heavier material, it'll feed right in um, nicely. There's nothing on the bottom of this foot. And because it's not metal, it's not gonna stick to our vinyl. Um, so it's gonna be nice and smooth and it's not gonna leave any marks on our material, which is perfect for when you're sewing with um, uh, like leather, you don't want any marks left on it because it's not forgiving. Same with this vinyl. So this is really nice. And there's a little groove under on the bottom here, which allows the stitches to flow as you sew, which is perfect. And it attaches the same way with the little bar. So let me switch back over here and we're gonna stick this foot on. Get a little click, it's that easy. I love how easy it is to switch out the feet on our Singer sewing machines. Let me pause for just a second. I think we might've had a question. The question is, do you have any alternate seed ideas for a basic featherweight machine? That may be a question I'll have to think about and come back to, and I'll be happy to, um, when we're done with the live, come back and comment to your questions. So Patty, if you can um, hold tight, and then maybe what, while you watch the tutorial today, you might figure out some options that work for your machine. Um, but I'll have to do some research and I can come back and comment later if you don't mind waiting, okay? All right, so we're going to, um, do our zigzag to make a seed. Now this is thick <laughs> and it's a little tough to fit through here, but one of the things that you need um, that's really helpful on our Singer machines is that extra foot lift. 
So the same little lever that lowers the foot and lifts the foot, you just lift it a little higher and then I can fit this pretty thick foam um, uh, padded like quilted vinyl through here nice and easy. So I'm going to lower my foot and I don't start in the center of a diamond shape. I kind of start a little higher so that it kind of ends up in the center. Again, I'm just eyeballing it. As you saw, all of my seeds were just a little different. The thread I am using today is just a cotton uh, thread, but I did want to point out real quick that I grabbed a couple of other threads. These are rayon. As you can see, they're nice and shiny and they're used more for um, like applique and those kind of things, embroidery. And they are um, a little more decorative looking. So you could use something like this on the top and then have, um, a, a, you could put it on the bottom too for your bobbin, but you could use a cut on the bottom. But I grabbed a couple like this gold, this light yellow, you could do white. Your seeds could be any color that you want them to be. You do not have to use a cotton thread, but that is what I am using today in the machine. All right. All right. So I'm going to stitch one out real quick and I'm just going to let you guys watch me stitch it. And then I'm going to go over to the, the, LCD screen on the machine and stitch out another one and let you watch what I'm doing to get that look. So I'm going to drop my needle, find my foot control on the floor. It got away from me. I feel like they always like to run away. All right. So I've got my stitch width at two and I'm going to do a couple of stitches. I'm going to back stitch a couple of times just to secure them. And then I'm going to adjust the size of my stitch. And I'm doing something on purpose here. I'm, I'm kind of pushing it through. So you can see how it will um, change the look of the seed by how much you um, push, kind of pull it through the machine. I love that sound of the automatic needle threader. Let me trim my thread real quick and then I'll show this to you guys. All right, so here's my first little seed. Kind of cute. Do you see how I have a little more spacing? Sorry, my hands in the way. I have a little more spacing between the um, stitches here. That's because I was really like kind of helping it through. Um, the machine. Sometimes when you're doing one close to the edge, you may have to kind of help it feed through. The ones in the middle tend to feed a little easier, but again, you want to make sure you have the cotton on the back of that foam. Okay. So now I'm going to do another one and I'm going to explain how I adjusted my stitches so you can see how I got it to look that way. All right. So this is what um, I did. I started at two millimeter stitch uh, width and I have my stitch length at 0.4. I do not change my stitch length the entire time I'm doing this. I'm only adjusting the stitch width. I'm going to drop my needle. I'm going to do a couple of stitches and then I'm going to do a couple of back stitches. This is just securing the beginning of that seed for my stitch. Then I'm going to go up to point uh, 2.5 stitch width and I'm going to do four or five stitches and then I'm going to do go up to three millimeters and do a few more stitches and then 3.5 and then four and you get where I'm going here right 4.5 and then five now this machine will actually go higher so I could keep going if I wanted to but I kind of liked the length that I was getting stopping there. But again, we can go further if we want. And we'll go up to six. All right. So now what I want to do is to taper my seed down so it looks more rounded at the bottom. We kind of are going for like a teardrop look. Okay. And let me check. All right. So this time I'm going to, instead of just lowering it, half a millimeter, I'm going to go down a full millimeter. And instead of doing four or five stitches each time, I'm only going to do maybe two or three. All 
and then I'm going to back stitch. And I, this is my probably one of my favorite features on this machine. And it's not because it's necessary, but because it's a luxury, <laughs> is the uh, automatic thread cutter. And it just makes a fun sound. Um, and so we have finished that one. Now, this one got a little stubby. It didn't feed through um, quite like this one, but I also was not assisting it, okay? So I wanted to show you that, that if you don't kind of help it through because it is thick, then um, it's not gonna be as long. So it's just something you kind of have to watch and practice. Remember I said we practice on our scrap fabric first and then we do it. Once we get our groove, then we do it, okay? I'm gonna do another one. And one thing I like about how I set this up for you guys is you start at this point, the two millimeter width, and then you go all the way up and then come back down to the two millimeter width. So the next time you go to start one, you're right back to where the starting point is where you need to be, okay? This time I'm gonna help it a little more get through. And I, it wouldn't move this much at all if I wasn't using this non-stick foot. It is so helpful. Now I'm going to go back down. So once you get the hang of it, they go pretty quickly. And see, that one turned out really cute. So again, you just have to kind of practice with it and play around with it and adjust your settings to your machine. But do you see how easy it is to change these settings to be able to create these kind of shapes? So now my question to you is, thinking of this process, what other shapes do you think we could possibly create by adjusting these zigzag stitches? Um, I would love to know what your ideas are. I love to inspire you guys to kind of think outside the box and try some new things. I'm going to switch back over to this camera. I am going to stitch it one more time for you guys just so you can see it up close. You probably can't hear my machine too well. It's pretty quiet. Um, you might be able to hear the beeps on the on the when I push them to change the sizes, but there we go. And that extra lift is what helps you get your um, fabric out. I'm gonna actually switch back to this camera so you can see this one right here. So three out of four good ones is not bad. <laughs> I got three good ones here. This one got a little stuck right here, and that was my fault because I wasn't feeding it through in the same manner that I was the other three. So what I could do, and I don't have it in here with me, is take a seam ripper and do not start with that long pointy side, flip it over, and get the other side that's not as sharp up under there so you don't tear your fabric and slide it that way and that'll loosen all of these stitches you can pull them out and then just start in the same point and it'll cover up those those stitch holes does that make sense do you guys get that any questions on how to make these little seeds aren't they cute super easy the other um foot that i wanted to show i'm not going to demonstrate this today but the other foot that you're going to need for this project is a zipper foot. A zipper foot does come with your machine. So a zipper, adding a zipper to this project is optional. You do not have to. Um, you could just do the green at the top and fold it over and leave it open or do a little button or a snap or a Velcro or something if you did not feel comfortable trying to do a zipper on it. Um, but uh, you can use a seven inch zipper for the size that we I made in the instructions. It fits it perfectly. Or you can use zipper tape and cut one to fit your, your bag. All right, I'm gonna read this question real quick. This used to be so easy on the machines that weren't computerized. 
uh, you could make some really smooth transitions with those, yes. So if you still have one of them, you might want to drag that out for this. Okay. Um, and then I, you know, yes, you can totally do this project on a non-computerized machine. You would just have to adjust the dial every time that you're changing the width of your stitch. Um, if you have a computerized machine, it, it literally sets it exactly the same spot every time you hit the button. So there's a little consistency there. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, you really can do this project on any machine. The tools that you really need are going to be this non-stick foot and a zipper foot. And the other thing that I meant, wanted to mention to you all is this project recommend, I, de I definitely recommend denim needles or uh, heavy duty needles or even leather needles um, for this project. Uh, we are sewing through some thick material. And once you start stitching it all together and creating these seams, you're definitely going to need a heavy duty or denim needle um, for this project. So denim needle, non-stick foot and have some fun. All right, that's all there is. Now my last question to you guys is, and I want you to leave some comments for me. Um, what other what other designs would you want to make for a hand, like a little bag, a little purse like this? I mean, I chose a strawberry because it just screams summer and I just think about it and I, it was just really cute. Um, but I feel like you could make a lot of different shapes with the same instructions. So take my instructions and go, okay, well, I did the strawberry. Now I want to try a watermelon or um, a paw print. I think a paw print would be really cute. Um, you could do this with actual quilted material versus like the vinyl. You could do this with duck cloth. You could do this with a lot of different types of materials. So you do not have to make it with the the vinyl, um, but I just I just loved how this looked. I will tell you when I sewed this strap together, um, because it is this softer vinyl that's the back of the bag, this this softer side. Okay, I only did the quilted on the front, just made it less bulky. Okay, um, but I use the same vinyl that's on the back to make the strap. And this is pretty thick when you fold it over and sew down both sides of the strap because you're going to make your own strap. And this non-stick foot is the only way I was able to do that. So this is a great, great foot. Um, if you don't want to do make your own strap, you can get a little chain and attach some hooks here and do a chain for your bag. Um, or you just make it a clutch. I think that would be cute too. All right. So if we don't have any, an eggplant or tomato, Okay, I love those ideas. I actually grow tomatoes. I have a whole garden outside, um, out back, and tomatoes are my favorite. I eat them like apples. And um, so I kind of now want to make one with a, it looks like a tomato. That would be super cute. I wanted to give you guys a quick sneak peek at our project of the month for August. So, yes, we're halfway through July. And we still have time to make this one. Um, but I kind of always like to give you a little sneak peek of what's coming next. And when I was thinking about August, uh, that's when my son starts back to school. I know a lot of people are preparing to start back to school in August. And so I wanted to do something back to school themed. And my son does school from home. He's a virtual student and high school student. And so they don't have books. Um, I remember the days of having to put everything in my backpack and lug it around and having a locker with these giant textbooks. And now everything's online for them. Um, even our schools that where you go in person, they are doing everything tablet and computer and everything. So I decided to create a little back to school tablet cover. And I'm going to show you, this is the cutest fabric too. Let me close this one up so you can see what it looks like closed. And I'm going to actually, let me move this camera out of the way so I don't keep bumping it. All right, so I can get closer. Look at how cute this is. How fun is this? And this little back to school fabric is just adorable. It looks like an actual notebook that they doodled on. And um, you just move the elastic here and it opens up just like a book. And it will stand up um, for you. You can stand it like that. Okay. Or you could flip it over and stand it up like this. How adorable is that? And this was such 
a quick and easy make. I cannot wait for you guys to learn how to make these. Um, this project will be available uh, in August uh, on our website on singer.com. And here's another one. I made a big one. So this was for my son's um, iPad. And then I made a big one for my bigger tablet. And this one even had room for my little Apple pencil together. But yeah, how cool is this? Already loving the August project. Thank you. I am on a roll. If there's anything you guys want to learn how to do or make, um, you have some suggestions for our monthly projects, we'd love to hear those. Definitely leave those in the comments. Um, I'm excited for you guys to make this. This is using a material I haven't used before. It's all made with cotton, but the inside that makes it hard, I don't know if you guys can hear that, um, but it is chipboard. And so I had never really worked with chipboard and I found some really neat tricks to help sew around that chipboard um, to you basically like, or maybe like a pillowcase to go around it. So this is our project for the month for, um, for August for back to school. So this is great. One thing I also love about this project is when it's all folded up, the top and bottom are still open. So if you need to charge it, you can still charge it when it's in that. So all right, if we don't have any other questions or suggestions on shapes that they would make their handbag, I'm going to hop off and wish you guys well. Please, please, please make our project of the month. And when you do, tag us in your photos. Um, you can tag us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, definitely share those project photos with us. We'd love to see those. And then um, you can also use the hashtag singer sewing as well. Um, but I hope you guys have fun making this. It's just so stinking cute. I am obsessed with it. I get compliments on it. I, I use it. I made two. So I have one to keep that looks all nice. And then I have one that if it gets a little dirty, it's okay. And um, I have taken it out with me and it was, I get so many compliments on it. And the best thing to say when you get compliments on something you've made is I made it. And that's just really rewarding and people love that. Um, so anyways, I will see you guys next month for our project of the month. Um, and then, uh, Patty, I will, when we get off here, I'll do some research and I'll hop on to, um, Facebook and I'll comment back to your question. So let me do that when we get off of here. And then, um, if there's nothing else, or if you guys have any other questions, don't hesitate to leave them if you're watching the playback. All right, guys, my name's Bethany and I am an educator with Singer Sewing. And I'm so glad that I got to talk to you today and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.